At Atomic, we make a few different Conrods for the Barra six-cylinder engines. We make four, as you can see here. And so I thought I'd just quickly run through the features and benefits of all of these different Conrods. Now, the first steel Conrod that we do is, a, is what we call our Street Talker Conrod. It's an I-beam rod, as you can see. It's a budget rod. It's pretty good. It handles up to 550, 600 kilowatts at the tyres. Uh, so it's quite a durable piece. Um, and we put them in all of the mild engines and also some of the normally aspirated engines that we do. Now the next rod up from that is what we call our Super Legera, or it's rated to about 690, 700 or so kilowatts at the tyres. Um, it's a H-beam construction, which is stronger than the I-beam in construction, and it also has a couple of features which uh, I don't think anybody else uh, has in a standard uh, performance rod. Uh, what they are, the main feature is that we drill a rifle drill a hole up through the centre of the conrod, and it feeds oil through to the gudgeon pin. Now feeding oil through to the gudgeon pin does two things. Firstly, it lubricates the gudgeon pin in the bush, which is a big, big wear problem in turbo engines because of the loading down onto the gudgeon pin by combustion. Secondly, the excessive amount of oil that is fed there that would not normally be there under normal conditions is, splashes around and cools the underside of the piston. So um, it does two, two jobs. It's very, very effective in doing those two jobs. Uh, I stole that idea actually from diesel engines. Uh, diesel engines for many, many years have had pressurised oil feed to the gudgeons and piston crown cooling built in. So uh, I thought if it can work well in a diesel with 25 to 1 compression and plenty of boost, uh, we're not going to have any problems in a, in a turbocharged Ford engine that's only making 1,000 or 1,500 horsepower. The next rod up from that is what we call our fat rod. And you can see why it's called a fat rod because the beam is obviously a lot fatter than the 698. Rod, there's a, there's a good comparative of the two. Um, this is rated to around about a thousand kilowatts or so. Um, it also has the oil feed hole up through the, the centre that we've rifle drilled in place. Um, the oil feed for the rifle drilling is picked up by the factory hole in the bearing, so there's no bearing machining or there's no other machining of anything. It all just bolts together in the straightforward format. This is the strongest rod that we do. Now the weakest rod that we do is this aluminium rod. Now, these are made for us to our spec by CP Carrillo in the States. Um, they're an aluminium rod made out of a proprietary aluminium. And the reason we use these is only in engines above 15, 1600 horsepower, because the aluminium can absorb some of the combustion shock loading as opposed to a steel rod, which will impart that shock loading straight through to the journal, straight through to the bearings, and we end up with bearing problems when we get to those sort of power levels. The second uh, point of these conrods is the fact that they do require a lot more maintenance. Now, people have often asked me, can I use them in streetcars? I don't think you can. Um, what we find is that the rods do stretch after a while because of the continual work hardening of the, uh, of the engine with uh, combustion. Uh, so uh, CP recommend measuring them at after 30 runs and changing them at 50 runs. So that's not much good for a streetcar, um, but if it was driven you know, with less boost and, and, and taken reasonably easily on the streets, I don't think the beam will actually fatigue during normal use. So there we have it. They're the four con rods that we do for the Barra engines. Um, these cover pretty well everything that's required in the range. We have the con rods to suit uh, our normal full stroke, 99.2 millimeter stroke crank, and we also have them to suit our D stroker crank, which is 86 mil stroke. Um, so there you have it. Got any further questions? Shoot me an email, give us a call and uh, I'll see what I can do to help you out.